hello everybody how we doing out there it's time for another episode of controller chronicles how's everyone doing today are you trying to do the radio uh, demon voice i wasn't trying to but you know so things just happen okay no Oh my god, off to a fantastic start. We're off to a great start, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Controller Chronicles, everybody. Your one-stop shop for all things video game news and discussions, all that good stuff. I am your host, Dan RJ, joined by my two friends and co-hosts, Blinded and Meta. How you guys doing today? Oh, I'm doing work great. Work. How's everyone else doing? I'm doing freaking fantastic, because I've just been gaming, gaming, and gaming. Lucky you. <laughs> Almost don't get that luxury, asshole. Uh, that's it. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a stack show today. There's a lot to talk about. We really only have, uh, well, we were only going to have one main topic for the show today, but then a breaking news dropped right before we started recording. So we decided to throw that in there at the last minute. But before we get to any of that, uh, we always got to start off by chronicling what we're playing. Yep. And, you know, got to talk about what we're playing right now. So, Meta, let's start with you. What are you playing? Oh, you quickest. jackass. Because <laughs> you'll be the quickest. I take that as an insult. That's not an insult. It's just, I'm just beat no, on it's it. an insult. Hey, Meta, we know that you have been playing games. So what have you been playing? Nothing. I've been doing schoolwork. That's what I've been playing. I've been playing the grind of fucking schoolwork. I've been playing IRL Persona. So what, the you're, what, what you're saying is the only game that you're playing right now is the game of life. I am playing the game of life is playing me. I'm a pawn. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Trying to, trying to turn myself into a knight over here. Golly. Uh, no, in, 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 in all seriousness, in all seriousness, because uh, these do count as video games. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, and I don't care how or I don't care. Tomorrow I am playing a video game. Tomorrow is, of course... We're recording this on the 7th, Thursday, the February the 8th is my birthday. Uh, I am playing, I'm going to be playing the Konosuba visual novel uh, because I love Konosuba. It's one of my top favorite animes of all time. And I am just looking forward to experiencing some isekai goodness once again. Peak fiction is on the horizon for me. So that's what I'll be playing. All right. Thank, thank you, Weeaboo, for sharing that with us. Uh, I know your ass ain't talking Final <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> that's it uh blinded what have you been playing uh i've been playing well i just finished that uh silent hill what was it called oh, that, that the, the oh the it's silent, not a demo it is a silent message I think. yeah yeah how, it was how mid was as that? hell how was that mid as hell mid as hell uh, not a very good game i it's like I want to say like 90 minutes two hours it's short it's very short oh yeah i figured it was gonna be short because they offered it for yeah. free yeah, it's it's kind of like PT, but the story is about some girl and her friend committed suicide, and you're running around from this blossom flower monster. It's not the greatest thing in the world. I mean, it, I don't even know why they put it out, to be honest. But Damn, man. Like, they put it out for Silent Hill fans. <laughs> It's not worth it. It's not Let's even see, Silent man, Hill. They, they're, they're, they're trying to give the Silent Hill fans some crumbs, okay? It, honestly, I've seen a lot of Silent uh, Hill fans hate it because it, it doesn't even take place in Silent Hill. It makes no sense. Like, they came up with this concept of, like, the Silent Hill effect where other towns are affected. And it, it makes no sense. Like, it's just ridiculous, really. Um, but besides that, I'm also playing Alan Wake Remastered, which... Uh, it's it's pretty good so far. Uh, it's really creepy. <laughs> There's a moment in the game that I was like, oh, I'm surprised that they put this in the game where someone came up behind the cabin and they were just walking. And I'm like, oh, oh I, yeah. I didn't expect that in, in this uh, game. I don't I don't know why, but yeah, that game, the game's got a creep factor for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, pretty good yeah, as for me, I've been juggling between two different games. I am replaying Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm going to be replaying that and then playing the Integrate DLC to get ready for Rebirth, which comes out in just in a, a few weeks. weeks. Yeah, uh, so I got to finish that pretty soon. Uh, the other big game I'm playing, it's a new release. I am currently playing uh, Persona 3 Reload on PlayStation 5. 
Um, about lucky tw- bitch. <sighs> well, hey, hey, listen, it's not my fault. Okay, I, I, I'm just here. I'm just vibing. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. But I'm about 20 hours in. I just unlocked the new some new battle uh, mechanics called uh, Theurgy, and that's been really fun. Um, you know, we, 20 hours. Ha- we- 20 hours in, I would just say it very simply. It's pretty much everything I could have wanted and more from a remake of this game. I played the original Persona 3, I want to say, uh, back in 2019, 2018. It's been a while since I last played it. Um, so it, it's it's been great. It's a, really, it's a really solid remake. I'll have more thoughts as we do more episodes because I'm going to be playing this game for a while. I'm gonna try and beat it before Final Fantasy, but I, I don't know if I can. Like I'm only 20 hours in, and I'm yeah, not, yeah, I, no, I you're the surface. Yeah, you know? you're not getting there, homie. Especially, you know, there is a bit of Persona news that I would like to talk about, just as a as a smaller story before we get to our bigger ones. But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, so I know, I know where you're you at now in the story compared to where you were in Fez, um, like. How big of a difference is it for those that, you know, maybe played only vanilla or Fez or even portable? Um, like, how jarring of a so, difference is it? So, it's pretty much a one-to-one remake to Fez. Good. The, uh, there's nothing that I've noticed so far that's been, like, a major difference. Um, the only thing that they've done is kind of, like, add little stuff. And the biggest thing they added is the stuff that I just played, which is the Theurgy stuff, where they give the they, they give C's their new outfits and their new yeah. combat gear and their new ability with their, like, their special attack. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been the biggest difference, and that just happened. Other okay. than that, it's like a one-to-one remake. Like, literally, quite... Pretty much everything's the same. A lot of it's just a bunch of quality of life improvements. Like, they added, like, text messaging... Uh, like from Persona 5 and Persona 5 uh-huh. Royal. So it's a little bit easier to get to your social links without having to Whereas walk around. Back then it was flip phones. Yeah, they used the flip phones, yeah. And everybody <laughs> has an everybody has an email or a flip phone, even like the little girl who's like five That's... years old. How she has a phone and can email you, I don't nah, know. Nah, we, we're not going to question that because there were kids on MySpace that were should not have been on MySpace. We're not going to question that right um but yeah it's been really good so far i barely like i haven't even met i guess yet so i'm not even into the like i said you haven't met best girl yet cool i haven't met i haven't met the the toaster i've not met toaster waifu yet no um so i literally just unlocked fuka and like i'm near like heading towards the back half of of june so like i said i'm like maybe like 20 to 25 percent of the game like i barely like 20 like from what I was reading, this game is about 80 to 100 hours long. My playthrough is probably going to be close to do about the 90 to 100 hour mark. It's because I'm really taking my time. I'm really exploring things. I'm really, it's really good. It's a really you're, good you're, you're You're grooving. You're vibing. Yeah. Well, I'm also doing a ton of grinding in Tartarus. A ton of grinding in Tartarus. Like, I'm all, like my party is all like already leveled like 25. So like we're, we're we're vibing pretty good. But yeah, more thoughts to come. It's a really good remake. Um, I'll be playing that. And I'm juggling that with Final Fantasy VII Remake. So quite literally, folks, as soon as I finish VII Remake, well, uh, well, replaying it, I mean, once I finish replaying VII Remake, which I'm about like halfway through, then I do Integrate and I finish Persona 3 Reload or get close to finishing it, hopefully. I'm jumping right into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So I am just, I'm overwhelmed with games to play. I, I mean, There's only so many hours in the day that I can try and like knack away at this stuff, you know, but it, it, it's a good problem to have, so... Okay, so, um, my brain just decided to, to freeze up. All right, well, good. I again, I uh, I intend to get to that game eventually. I'm so disheartened that I couldn't uh make time for it. But yeah, it's just a commitment I don't have the time for right now. Um, yeah, it's understandable. I mean, like this, I both. Well, I would say especially Persona, it's a time sinker. You know, well, like and like I have like a game. dragon, like a dragon, infinite wealth, and Persona Three back to back. Like I could be good for the entire year. In all honesty, like those two games, I could be good for the entire year for games until Metaphor comes out. Um, God, don't even remind me of that. It's at the end of the year. <laughs> right. That game is going to be a time eater too. Uh, well, if you don't mind, uh, unless there's, do you have, do you have more you want to talk about? 
Persona 3 Reload or? No, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like I said, like I'm only 20 hours in, but it's a blast. It's pretty much everything I could have asked for and wanted. So, um, okay. yeah. Um, well, if if y'all will indulge me for just uh, a brief moment of time. You get two um, minutes. Go. No, I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. This is a smaller story, but, you know, the very the famous leaker from Atlas, uh, who people at this point are saying it's a plant to soft announce stuff and i believe that actually um they've been very or she's been very active recently on on the on the twitter on the x whatever you want to call the platform um with a lot of news about atlas for like persona and smt and a bunch of other franchises from Sega. So I wanted to just quickly touch on that because you know she she is a very reliable source. She is credible. Uh, even though even though that is the case, uh, take everything with a grain of salt. Plans can change. Projects can be canceled at any time. However, this stuff seems pretty definitive. So the first thing is, of course, uh, Persona Three Reload is going to be getting DLC uh, over the course of the year, and the answer will be dlc which means the answer will still be con- the canonical ending of persona 3 well yeah it's more like an epilogue yeah or an, it's epilogue. Like an epilogue it's the canonical yeah. epilogue it's the what's well, the finale which, of- by the way by the way thank god thank god they're not reselling the game later with like a new so i have edition. a theory on I'm that i'm so happy with that i'm so I happy have a the- it's DLC. I, I have a theory on that a game theory yes i do mm-hmm. um i think that they're going to release all this dlc and then wait a bit and then repackage it again. But the the, the caveat is the why why would we want to do that? MC. She's not DLC, but I can see them doing that. That's a very Atlas thing to do. That's a very Atlas thing to do. Because it would take them it would take them time to program her and her story into the game. I see that as a possibility. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I see that as a possibility. I think it's more likely that they wait till the answer comes out and they repack to the game to sell it on Switch too. That's more likely to me. Well, because, that, that's also a possibility because in the original game, the answer was only for the for uh, Persona Three Fez, and that was only with the male protagonist. Portable didn't have the answer at all. So no, that's what I'm saying. But th- what I'm saying is that you know, FMC is not DLC. That is confirmed. Uh, but fans love FMC so much, um, and the definitive persona experience for a lot of people is having both sides of that coin, having the answer and having them see. So I'm saying I could see Atlas pull an Atlas um, and re-release P3 reload with them see as the new like reason why you should buy this version. Um, Cause people would buy it regardless of them already owning a copy or not. I mean, they bought persona five and persona five Royal, you know, it's going to happen again. Uh, but that's just the first bit of of news. There's so so much. Um, yeah. Well, would you guys like to get into the main news topics now? Yeah. So well, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, is that is that fine? I don't, I don't want to cut you no, off. No, no. Well, the, I'll, I'll, I'll 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 rapid fire these then because we did talk about that for a bit of time. Um, so the new Jet Set Radio game is not a remake. The game is a reboot that will be released in 2026. A remastered version of Jet Set Radio was was planned. Um, uh, it was originally going to be released in 2027, but the game was the game has changed since it started development. There is an initiative to reboot many Sega games in new ways. Um, it was meant to say remake. Uh, there was a Jet Set Radio remake and reboot plan. The reboot was revealed at the Game Awards. That's so. That's what we saw during that Sega event. Um, all the titles from the Game Awards event are coming to the next Nintendo, the next Nintendo console. So those are all going to be on the the new Switch. Yeah, that, that um, makes sense. That makes sense. The same thing for Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi also had a remake and reboot initiative. And Crazy Taxi is planned for 2027 release right now. Uh, the reveal at the Game Awards event is a Crazy Taxi reboot with online elements. It is not a remake. Um. And then I can't exactly find that specific uh, tweet that they send out about uh, about SMT, but it's it, it was like something along the lines of um, actually, give me give me one brief moment. I actually know where to find it. I just remembered. I just remembered where it is. Um, it's his pocket. My mm-hmm. pocket, guys. Of course, no, uh, no. Um, 
aware, aware, aware. Here we go. Um, let's see. So also we we learned, yes, we also learned it. The well, other projects exist at Atlas because they're wanting to revitalize not just the Sega games, but they're looking at it. Looks like they're looking the new CEO is looking at everything that Sega owns as well, from RGG to Atlas and everything, and making an initiative to revitalize the brands. Um, even if they really you could say they don't need it, but anyway, so not only does a P2 remake exist, full remake exists at Atlas right now. Uh, a P1 remake also exists. Uh, not all, um, and there's also a P4 remake. So all mm -hmm. the games are getting a remake. Basically, that yes. Although the there was some new information that, that indicates Persona One and Two may only be getting a remaster for the time. No, no, no. That that is fake. That was from a fake source. Um, I don't think so. Because no, 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 no. I okay. Sonic Saber is someone that I follow um, on YouTube, and he or yeah he i think it's a he they along with um god what do i call this person i don't know they're japanese the, the anyway they that um from what uh, sonic sonic saber has said along with um i'm gonna i don't know what their name is anyway the person that we're talking about mbkk double s i don't know um they're someone else said it was a remaster it's not they are full-fledged remakes um all three of them are they'll come out you know over the course of time but there's that's not all um there is also okay so someone asked if, if shin megami tensei is dead no there is a netflix game coming and a title connected to smt5 as well as a remaster title now the remastered smt title could either be um Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2 remaster because that's something that a lot of people thought would happen or it was um it was uh the fourth game on that list of remasters and remakes because basically it seems like Atlas is going to handle the top echelon of what was asked to be remade or remastered so all mm -hmm. Persona 1 2 and 3 1 2 3 and 4 and then the one SMT game that was number 5 is going to get the remaster so three rem four remakes and a remaster is seeming like seemingly what Atlas is doing for the foreseeable future. And I can see that remaster being after metaphor, honestly. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I, I think after Persona 3 reload, I think remaking Persona 4 makes a lot of sense. Um, it's just a matter I'm glad of what you comes say that for... because most people say it's not needed. I mean, is it needed? No. Neither was neither was Resi 4, but it was a great remake nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see a graphical update. I mean, I think Persona 4 Golden, I mean, from a gameplay perspective, I think it's aged very well. Uh, visually, yeah, it's not the best, but I mean, it works, you know. But I, I would like to see a modern remake of it. Why not? Yeah, yeah. We'll see, though. Yeah. We'll see. A lot of things happening at Sega. Yeah. Speaking of uh, a lot of things happening, you guys want to uh, get into the breaking news? Sure. Sure. So this happened before we went live. Disney announced at their investors day that they are going to invest 1.5 billion dollars into Epic Games and they are now going to have like I think like a 10% stake in the company. Yeah. Uh so this was just yeah. announced a little bit ago. So Disney and Epic Games to create expansive and open games and entertainment universe connected to Fortnite. The Walt Disney Company and Epic Games will collaborate on an all-new games entertainment universe that will further expand the reach of beloved Disney stories and experiences. Uh, Disney will also invest $1.5 billion to acquire an equity stake in Epic Games alongside the multi-year project. The transition is subject to customary closing conditions, including regulatory approvals, yada, yada, yada. Uh, basically, they're talking about Unreal Engine. Uh, he, this is interesting. So, in addition to being a world-class games experience and in, in interoperating with Fortnite, this new persistent universe will offer a multitude of opportunities for consumers to play, watch, shop, and engage with content, characters, and stories from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, Avatar, and more. Players, gamers, and fans will be able to create their own stories and experiences, express their fandom in a distinctly Disney way, and share content with each other in ways that they love. This will all be powered by Unreal Engine. Um, so this sounds like... They're creating like, a metaverse. This sounds, yeah, I was going to say, this yeah. sounds like the metaverse. 
And I, they, y- like, you, here, y'all, ooh, I really should have, I really should have trademarked that fucking name. The metaverse. Mm. I should have trademarked it. Everyone told me to. Yeah. Well, this is also a big deal because Disney is now getting back into video gaming in a sense. They're teaming up with that. Well, they, they were already with, uh... with like with like Lucasfilm games reemerging and you know them licensing Marvel games. They were technically but, back. But I'm just saying, like, they're gonna get involved with Epic Games now. Like that's a big investment. 1.5 billion and buying stakes into the company. You know? Yeah, that is pretty big. So uh, this looks like the metaverse that they're talking about, this concept art here. A Ready metaverse Player One. Built- yeah is this gonna work this sounds it i sounds, gotta be honest well sounds they also well they also mentioned that they're gonna use unreal engine for their parks like a lot of their rides utilize right. unreal engine too so like they, they want the unreal engine as well well yeah uh, i mean it makes sense because yeah, like, we're this... gonna see a lot of disney collaborations in Fortnite now way more yeah. well braille braille i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna ask braille do you think that this uh could eventually be it's it's some it's something that's so big that it folds in on itself because it can't handle like i mean what my my thing is like so is this going to be a console experience like play watch like i think it's gonna like, be probably making a multimedia experience yeah multimedia is what i'm guessing yeah yeah that's what i mean it just doesn't... oh my god does this mean that disney's gonna make a Fortnite movie Please that might also that. be possible. Please yeah. don't. Please don't. I, I'm I don't betting want to see they kids. Do. Braille, Braille. I'm going to sound like an old man, but I don't want to see no fucking kids doing the giddy into the theater and out. Like, you mean the gritty? You whatever the fuck twine. it's called. Right? I told you I'm going to sound like an old man. Like, hey, we should we should call this right now. I think that is going to happen. Disney's going to make it because Disney doesn't. I mean, the video game trend for movies is definitely going to take off, and Disney really has nothing. And it would basically just be Wreck It Ralph, but in live action. Besides Kingdom yeah. Hearts, even yeah. Kingdom. I mean, they could do Kingdom Hearts, but yeah, I feel that'd like be as, that would be better as a series than an actual movie. That'd be better as an anime yeah. series. But this is pretty massive because again, Epic Games they have so much going on in terms of live service stuff with Fortnite and Rocket League and Fall Guys, and then you have yeah, obviously the Unreal Engine like. I think we're going to see a lot more of those uh, Marvel and Star Wars games that are third party utilize Unreal Engine. I'm gonna, it's I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and be that dick. I'm gonna go ahead and be that dickhead again. They can afford to do this shit, but they can't afford to keep employees. Well, that's well, all right, guys. Who, who, I see your flex. But remember, Disney had a metaverse uh, division, and they got rid of everyone because I don't know, like it wasn't working out. And then they do something like this, so. Uh, well, I think I think it does depend on who's in charge. Um, if that happened under Chapek, uh, there's a reason for why that because Chapek just no, it was Bob Iger. That was when oh. Bob Iger came back. Oh, the first run for Bob Iger, you mean like the first run before yeah. Chapek came in? No, no, when Bob Bob Iger came back from Bob Chapek, so mm. what, 2022, early 2023, they fired a bunch of people. So, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, this is also just a big day for um, you know Disney in general because they're talking about Moana two. The movie's coming yeah. out this year, and they got so much they going got on. The live you action know? remake of the first one, so you yeah. can just do the second yeah. one animated before they remake it again into a live action one. Ah, uh, yes, the, the wheel. They also, they, yeah, they also announced Toy Story four and Frozen three yeah. are coming out in twenty twenty six. The Mando movies twenty twenty six. They lost, and, 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 and don't forget the most important bit. Uh, uh, RJ, don't forget the most important bit. Uh, they lost 1.6 million followers. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, they also, they also announced today. They also announced today that the password sharing crackdown for Disney Plus and Hulu oh. will begin today, and all that stuff. So they're going to lose yeah. even more followers. Congratulations. Well, no, ne- no. When Netflix did their password sharing crackdown, it actually bumped subscribers up. It actually worked. Jeez, man. That's what why is everyone's that? that's why that's why everyone's doing Consume. it because. That's what I'm saying. That's why everyone's doing it. Because once Netflix did it, they didn't lose subscribers. They actually gained subscribers. Because everyone's got like, oh, Braille, we've entered the dark times. Just it's it's Jover, bro. It's consumers it, it are not Jover. gonna consumers are not gonna stand up for for their their market rights. Like this is don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. It's literally that, bro. Yeah, I'm not. Uh... I, I have to be honest. I'm so burnt out on Disney. It just I, I just have no. They own every goddamn thing. No, they just make the same thing. 
over and over and over again. It's like, yeah. well, we'll see what this video game collaboration with Epic does, though. I mean, it could bear some. I mean, I'm not big into the whole metaverse thing, but like, I kind of, hey, I mean, we'll see what they do with it. If this know? is in VR, I, I might be interested. If it's non VR, then I have them, no interest. I guess, again, I could see this being on like the, the new Apple VR headset. Like, it'd be just like the Oasis from Ready Player One. That, I think it's, yeah. I think it's going to be like a cross media thing, honestly. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But you know what else might be Jover, guys? Are <laughs> we oh, jumping into the main boy. story? Yeah, Are we jumping, jumping into the main jumping, story? We're, we're, hot, we're jumping deep into the deep end of the pool. Mind you, okay, okay, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are this only probably 25, the biggest story of the year. We are 26 minutes in, and this story is probably going to take us the remaining bit of the episode. Yeah, most likely. It's yeah, that it's massive. That and honestly, we should start from the top and talk about everything that's happened since then. Because we need to go up. To, we need to go. Yeah, when you're like from the roots the, to the top. We gotta take you on the journey yeah. of how we got to this. This point, is right? a journey, bro. The so, journey was, of the dead box. So it, it be, so it <laughs> began. Often. It began with a rumor. It began with a rumor of, about a month or two ago that Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves, two Microsoft games. Would be coming to Nintendo Switch and PlayStation, and we covered this, and we covered that a little bit ago. Yeah, we we did mention that. <laughs> then suddenly, oh boy, a flood of news reports came in, oh, saying boy. that this is not where it was going to end. <laughs> oh boy, including this article from The Verge talking about Indiana Jones. <laughs> so Microsoft weighs launching Indiana Jones on the PlayStation Five. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle could arrive on PS5 months of the Xbox launch. This comes from Tom Warren. So this and is Tom so, Warren is pretty pretty credible, right? Yes. So again, they're talking about how the game could come to PlayStation 5. It's already going to come to Xbox and PC. But this is where shit hit the fan. A new multi-platform approach for certain Xbox games is emerging inside of Microsoft. We're told, with the company weighing up which titles remain exclusive and and others that will appear on Switch or PS5 in the future. Indiana Jones appears to be part of this new wave of multi-platform games. And that hmm. was like you could just hear the mic drop. Because <laughs> I kid you not, right after right after this report, the other news story was uh I think it was from Xbox Era. They and they yeah. said that they, they were reporting that they were hearing that Starfield would come to PlayStation 5 after the expansion that's coming out later this year. Then Jeff Grubb came out and reported that now the latest rumor that he's hearing is that Gears of War, the entire Gears of War franchise, may also be coming to PlayStation 5. And everyone's wondering, what the hell is going on? Well, uh, let's see. It's the end times. That's what's going on. Well, I, I, and I'll, obviously, say... well, here, real quick, though. A lot of people were panicking, wondering what the hell is going on. Okay. Uh, a lot of Xbox fans are freaking out. And it took a while. It took probably longer than it should have. But Phil Spencer finally commented on this two we days ago. That tweet up. We need to have that tweet up there. And he <laughs> said, we're listening and we hear you. We have been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay, stay tuned. So we now, are waiting for confirmation on what's going on. But things look very interesting. So basically, here's the summary, folks. It looks like Microsoft exclusive games that were going to just be on Xbox consoles and play and PC may in fact be coming to PlayStation and Switch, which is leading to speculation that Xbox as we know it is not going to be around anymore as a hardware manufacturer. They may be going third party like Sega or like Valve, where they're just going to become a digital storefront and like a digital platform. All right. So Bruh. That, that is a speculation. I want to start with Blinded. What is happening? Um, what the hell's going on? Should we be scared? I'm already scared. Real, oh, real, real, Bruh. real, real quick, bro. Real quick before you jump into this, uh, I, I do want to say. You wanted to say what? Say what, man? Say what? You can't <laughs> leave us hanging. We were okay. supposed to have. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I think I froze for a minute. You did. Um, you did. Yeah. I, I'm closing my tabs. I'm closing some tabs. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we were we, we were that sounded bad. That sounded sus. Hold on a minute. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm closing my PG tabs. Anyway, 
we were supposed to have a guest with us, but due to due to personal reasons, they were not able to make it. However, they did uh, have this. They had they sent out this tweet, and I wanted to read it at least. Um, this is what uh, our guest uh, basically says about this. Uh, the Verge's Tom Warren confirmed my theory. Microsoft, uh, Microsoft to do the business update next week. Most of the team at Xbox, including several higher ups, are left in the dark about what's what's about to happen. Microsoft essentially took control over the Xbox division till further notice. Oof. That's, oof. That's all I got to say. <laughs> so hold on, hold on. So basically what we're saying is that right now at the, Xbox, at the Xbox offices, this is what it looks like. This, this is the is naked. Fine. Oh, okay. This is fine. <laughs> this, this is fine. fine. I would have used the naked gun uh, meme. Where wait, it's wait, like, wait, nothing to see gun. here. Nothing, nothing to see here. Go, bro. <laughs> I love those films. It's every everything is on fire and shit. I love those films. It's just but nah, bro. Like, yeah. Bro, bro, besides, oof. What do you have to say, bro? Uh, uh, I, think, okay. I, I think I think I can tell you what Brown's gonna say right here. That's yeah, no. here, places first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I, I'll be honest, guys. I, I'm very scared for Xbox. Like, I, I, I am scared too. My speculation is that next week they're going to make their announcement to coincide with the Nintendo Direct and the Hi-Fi Rush to Switch announcement. Dun, dun, but I could dun, be wrong. Dun, 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 but either way, dun, dun. this is very scary. Like, it took them two days to finally say something, which is, they should have something immediately. And uh, they didn't really. Here's the thing. I mean, that tweet is like, we hear you. But we don't give a shit. That's by literally- the way. By the way, I'm gonna go ahead and say it since it will be by the time this episode drops, it'll already be done. That how that is worded. That's gonna be my tweet to promote this episode, Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. We hear it's- you, and we've made an episode to cover this because <laughs> it's just yeah. It- like what is like like blinded? What is your analysis of what the hell's going on? Do these there- rumors have like? Do you believe these rumors or I a hundred percent believe these rumors? Um, and it's only because of the fanboys. That's the reason why I believe this rumor, because some of you may have seen, but the meltdown just from these rumors is catastrophic. It is absolutely mind blowing. They sold their Xboxes, bro. Yeah, and and also too, I want to paint a picture because some people think, oh, it's just fanboys, right? No, these people. First off, they have YouTube channels that are monetized. They have some insider connection. I mean, it's it's debatable, but at the same time, we've seen these people at conventions taking photos with Phil Spencer, right? That's how deep these people are in the uh, Xbox community, right? So they have a deep connection with Microsoft. And because they're freaking out, some of these people are like, it's over. I don't want to keep doing this i don't want to talk about xbox it makes me believe that there is some merit to this that there is some truth to this now maybe it's not that big of a deal but at the same time i feel like if you're going to put games that were exclusive especially halo and gears forget about starfield forget about hi-fi rush if halo and gears are on a playstation I think it's over. over for Xbox. Yeah, that's yes. the identity. Well, that's what I was going to say, right? Like, for me at least, okay, I'm not someone who cares about the console wars, right? So when I heard the news at Hi-Fi Rush and see if these are going to cross over to PlayStation and Switch, I'm like, that makes sense. They're more like right. mid-range exclusives they're anyway. Double, they're double-A titles. And see if these have been out for years anyway, right? right? It doesn't really matter. But Halo and Gears? Starfield? Those are like pillar yeah. games for that for the the console. They freaking like the back of the Xbox Series X box had Starfield on the back of it to promote it. Like that they sold true. they yeah. sold the Series X with Halo and Starfield, right? Like those I don't feel like they should be giving up and giving away to PlayStation. That's just insane to me. And it, like so and the other thing is too like I understand some of the anger because if I've been an Xbox fan I've been sold on the promise of, don't worry, guys, the exclusives are coming. The exclusives are coming. The exclusives are coming. Don't mm. worry, guys. Just hang in it's there, so, okay? So For and years. Then, and then 2023, you got Hi-Fi Rush. You got Starfield. You actually got exclusives, right? And, and, this, year, and this year, and this year, you were promised a bunch of exclusives, all of which looked great. I mean, look back at our developer direct coverage. We we all pretty even, much like the even, developer direct. No, hell, and now back. you're saying some of those might not be like on Xbox anymore. What go was the point further. of investing as much as they were? 
go back further. Go back and watch us re- watch us uh, cover their press conference during the summer. We said it was the best press conference during the entire yeah. Summer Games Fest. That whole summer. Oh, yeah, it was. Absolutely. And, and so, like, what has happened here, I believe, is because, I, you know, I watched Mr. Matty Play's uh, review, or not review, but his coverage of this. Um, and he agrees with you, RJ. He said, you know, you were promised, you know, Starfield was that game that made you say, hey, this is, I can, I am, I am going to get an Xbox Series X to get this game. This yes. is a system seller. And right. for Microsoft to do this, not Xbox, this is not Xbox, this is Microsoft. There is a difference. This is the parent this company. This is like the higher ups, yeah. This is, yeah, yeah so you have, a, what's her name? Oh, fuck. Uh, you have Sarah Bond. I think her name is Sarah yeah, Bond. Yeah, because they yes, just Sarah, uh, they yeah. just appointed Sarah Bond head of Xbox. Sarah Bond they? and Phil Spencer yeah. uh, against uh, I forget their names, but the heads of Microsoft, bro. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I uh, forget his name. Uh, his name, and then there's also a woman. There's also a woman uh, as well. Uh, right. But anyway, it's them versus Sarah Bond and Phil Spencer, and I do believe they're like, look, um. They are not so the hardware. The hard, another thing this could be tied to is the hardware sales uh, numbers came in, and Microsoft is just finally sick of not seeing these hardware sales. Well, pushed. that's what I was gonna mention. When we look at hardware right. sales, aren't they in like a distant third? They're in a very yeah. distant third, and Microsoft's like, why are we spending sixty nine point three billion dollars on Activision Blizzard, and we've only bumped our console sales this much because of that acquisition? To them, that doesn't I'm- make good business sense. And so Microsoft's like, we're going to take over and well, we're not that, that, but I thought, that's, that's, but hold on though, hold on though, hold on. Though. I thought the whole point of Game Pass was that it was meant to like help with that. Like, listen, our consoles yeah. may not be selling as good as PlayStation, but Game Pass subscriptions are very high. We're making but, money off but that. the right. potential, the potential for that to go multimedia as well is greater than it just staying on Xbox. Microsoft well, we, sees there's that. there's a lot of okay, there's a lot of theories as to why this is happening and we'll probably know next week but with a press release I, that's I don't one, think, one theory I don't think, right i yeah I, I think that's one theory the hardware the thing is I, personally i i don't subscribe to that theory just because xbox's hardware has always been bad and i it is weird that they said that the series consoles were doing better than the xbox one but yet you know somehow they have a problem with it so that's why i'm like i don't really believe it now there is another theory, which is that Game Pass has been underperforming significantly. Yeah. Um, there was a. S- I, someone, I, I, I hate to interrupt, but we actually yes. have breaking news in the show as a recording. Oh, shit. So, is it relevant to this? It is relevant to this. Uh, it has just been confirmed that uh, Activision's Toy for Bob and yep. Legendary Games yeah. are getting massive layoffs. They're shut down. And apparently Toys for Bob offices are closing, which means that Toys for Bob may be gone as we know it. Yeah. Yep. So, and, so officially uh, that someone put that out? It was this fine. was yes. just retweeted yes. by Wario64, and this is coming from Steven oh, Totilo from, yeah. uh, from Axios and MTV News, and uh, yeah. San Francisco Chronicle is reporting this as well. Yes, uh, oh, Activision, uh, uh, Toys for Bob is probably gone and that's activision all- activision declined to comment by the way they actually said we well, of course we, yeah yeah of course but they this did. uh this is very bad this could mean that crash and spyro are dead once again unless yeah. vicarious visions steps up to the plate like vicarious visions can do that and I, I don't, but i'm just course- saying like this ties into it though because like what's going on with activision now we're getting these massive layoffs well we've been getting layoffs and again we really need to talk about that again we've been needing to talk about the layoffs because we're like just just halfway through January. We got uh, half of the like half of the total layoffs from last year in just half of a month. Like it's gonna get right. a lot worse before it gets better, and we need to talk about that again. But Activision Blizzard, uh, not Activision, Toys for Bob, closing. Uh, it could mean that those IPs are dead. However, um, I uh, Vicarious Visions could step back up and and shepherd these franchises um mind you the, vicarious vision was the ones that did the crash remake and they've done a right. few crash bandicoot games in the past as well they, they did the gba games that were really good uh and so i think vicarious visions can if they stick around if unless they're they get, hey. unless they get layoffs too so well, they're they, under activision right yes okay 
yes yes yes. but yeah i'm just saying like this is just adding to it we're just like what the hell is going on right microsoft is condensing microsoft is condensing their games division very heavily they are condensing like crazy right it feels like it it feels like they're really trying to just like streamline let me ask you guys this next week do we see potentially and this is what's really scary to me do we see phil spencer and sarah bond exit xbox Next so week. so so oh shit i don't hold, think hold, hold, on. Wait, wait, hold on hold on i got i got an answer for this so that was i i thought i sent maddie's video for y- y'all to watch there was uh from his sources there was some insinuation that if microsoft does fully take control there will be some not exactly naming names so it's not confirmed to be phil or sarah but there will be very big names leaving xbox like microsoft they will quit the company um and they'll they'll walk out because it's the same. So I'll just say this: you like Phil Spencer would walk out. I, I, I'm just saying, like if Phil Spencer leaves Xbox, it's over. Like listen, you like listen. I know Phil. We like a lot of us shit on Phil Spencer sometimes. We make laughs at him, but like he was holding up Xbox as best he could. If he's got, if he's gone, oh god, it's over. It's over, man. I I could see him going because it. it let's be honest the reason why xbox is fl- it's it, it's it not all, it all goes him. back to don matrix it's yeah don it goes matrix back fault. to the xbox one's fault but at the same time i feel like phil spencer never really learned the correct lessons they just thought they saw that playstation was kicking their asses and they were like how can we be top dog and they con- came up with game pass which yes game pass is cool and all but i think once they they pitched the idea that this could be an expanding thing this could be on all platforms i think that's when xbox died right because then it wasn't about the games it wasn't it was, about it was designing always, so basically what you're saying it was always inevitable because once you introduce i really think so out yes. there, yeah yeah we were me and meta were even saying i feel like the irony of all of this was that the xbox one was designed to be what the xbox are currently and that is going to end that ended up killing them as a gentlemen, result. Look because at, look at who bought an Xbox at, One. No one. Right? Gentlemen, look at the Discord real quick. I sent a photo. Yeah. Bruh. Well, well, Phil Spencer has talked about this too. Xbox lost the worst generation to lose because, like he mentioned, supposedly. The, well, but, the well, I know, but he's just saying like, and I agree with him. The PS4 and Xbox, um, the PS4 and the Xbox gener- Xbox One, one generation. One. Yeah. That was when people were building the digital game libraries. Right. So once people invest in the digital game libraries, it's very hard to get them to move or get them anywhere else, right? Yeah. It just, right. It, I do think that was just a bad generation for them to lose. As bad and as that, well, and that's that's an aspect of that generation that we have. Ne- I've never, honestly, never recognized until you just mentioned it, RJ. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because once you have your digital library, once you've invested your money into a console's digital library, yeah, you you're gonna be or hard even just physically. Well, physically too, but you can. But well, but we like, noticed. I mean, the digital games blew up. That yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you know? can't. You can't. I mean, once it's on the console, I mean, it's tied to your account, right? So you can go wherever with it, right? But, but like, it, 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 you would have to start from scratch with on a new jumping, console. Yeah, right. And I mean, I I still in, I still personally think it's a bit of it. I feel like every time Phil Spencer comes out. And talks about xbox and why they're so behind i feel like it's more of an excuse just because it's like if you realistically it's just the messaging that has been wrong with xbox right no one like phil spencer comes out and he says oh it's not about the games it's like well it is about the games because everybody thinks xbox has no games right so but that's why no one is gonna thing, buy it though, and this is what's so sad is that like i feel like they finally were turning things around because you look at their lineup for this year, their lineup was pretty strong. You had Avowed, you had Hellblade 2, and you had Indiana Jones. That's three, I mean, listen, that's three exclusives more than PlayStation has right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's more than PlayStation. Right, I, I do I'm agree with like, that. But... I, I feel like they were finally turning things around. It's like, okay, now we're getting a pipeline of like consistent exclusive releases now. And now all of a sudden it's like, well, sorry, they might be going to PlayStation, which is just like, just kind of like a punch in the gut. Cause it's just like, man, they were finally... It seemed like they were finally on the right path, and now it's just like now it's just like they're just giving up, or at least Microsoft. I, I don't think I think it's up. I think Microsoft is realizing you know above Xbox, they're realizing the bigger picture, and we have to remember if you actually look at 
the profit margins between each division. The gaming one is second, right? But yet it's not doing well. Does this make sense? You're it's profitable. It's the second best division in a trillion dollar company, but it's it was not the third. Enough. No, it's the second. It's the second. So this to me, and, and that shows that I think either Game Pass is profitable for them somehow or whatever they're doing some something there is there oh and they shit. can expand it right um there real quick there's three more games coming to potentially coming to ps5 bruh bruh um, like now they're well they're just next gen updates but this still is kind of matters i guess uh but what is it? the double Hellblade? the old the old remastered double fine games are gonna be oh, getting a next yeah. gen update Oh, so full okay. throttle day day of the tentacle and grim fandango that is big um but anyway like that's just three more uh games that are going to get a next gen update this is just yeah okay okay, okay. but um I, I was gonna say yeah I, I don't think i don't think game pass is profitable though like that's kind of the problem with it i don't see it being profitable i i don't it, it has to be bringing in some type of money. No, Maybe I'm, it's not, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not bringing in right. money, but I don't think it's like so profitable. You know no, I, mean? I, I don't think so either. It's just when I Microsoft saw that, I'm more money on the confused. software than hardware. They they might as well. They're listen. Microsoft has built their business on being software. Yeah, that's why. Why yeah. not just go third party? Just take forget about the Xbox console. Just put out the games because first off. These games are coming at a slow pace, right? Yeah. Hellblade was announced in 2019. We're only getting it this year in May. Think about all the other games that they announced that we still haven't seen. Perfect yeah. Dark, right? So they might as well just say, you know what? We, we tried with Xbox. It's not working. If we put our games on PlayStation, and this is another thing too, not to cut off my, my thought, but... What happens if Starfield sells more on PlayStation than Xbox with this test that they're doing? Oh, where it's going to be like the the version that's bundled in with the expansion. Yes, yeah. because think about think about this, right? Call especially of Duty, if, especially if it's sold on like let's say PlayStation Five Pro and actually runs better. Yeah, than the version that should have been there at launch. Yeah, if Call of Duty, which now Microsoft owns, makes thirty sells thirty million units. And half of that is from PlayStation. Don't you think Microsoft is going to go? Maybe we should test our games and see how they perform on PlayStation. And then if they're successful, just get rid of Xbox. Because then you can make so much more money by having it on Switch, having it on PlayStation. Maybe you could keep Xbox and it's just uh... like, a, like a Steam Deck situation. But even then, it's sort of like what's the point right i don't really understand it's sort of like a it's not a for them it's it is a waste of money but it's they, they make so much money that it doesn't matter anyway it, like it just uh, it seems like this is them getting the foot in their uh, in the door to put game pass on these you know competitor systems that's what it feels like and, and that's that that leads into the next part which is apparently what like i predicted they're calling it they're calling it microsoft game pass apparently well, that yeah, that's, that that, yeah. that was a thing today. GameStop uploaded that picture where they called it that, but supposedly, well, first off, GameStop deleted that tweet, and then you had uh, mm -hmm. industry reporters like Jez Corden say that that's not true. That's not what's going on. Right, and we should also talk about the fact that after this that, rumor came out, a bunch of people backtracked and said that you know it's not as bad as we think it is but yet they said halo is coming and gears of war is coming and starfield is coming but it's not as bad though hmm uh does also, it make sense also the ftc is has filed a court notice against microsoft laying off the activision employees Damn. 1900 employees are being laid off across the xbox bethesda and activision jeez hmm. Uh, yeah. I, oh. I remember though, everyone, I, I and, and, and the, the, I there are certain people that know who I'm talking to. Y'all wanted this. There are certain people that right. know who I'm talking to them. Y'all wanted this. How? how I this, just don't. This, this is how's that another thing. Going? I, I, uh, not to keep talking all, all the time, but there was okay. Do you remember at this right? It was like three, four years ago when Bethesda was bought by Microsoft. 
there was a rumor going around that Bethesda didn't want their games to be exclusive on Xbox. And there was a developer, I'm pretty sure it was the director of Doom Eternal. He came out and said that he didn't even want to develop for the Series S because it just it just feels like a handicap, right? Well, and so there has been what, a what, what have we been for, hearing? Look at Larian, look at Larian series of Baldur's Gate 3. Right. It was supposed to be on Xbox the same time as PS5, but like the freaking Series S is making it so difficult for them to do the freaking damn uh, multi- Series right. S, the 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 split screen multiplayer, whatever it was. Right. But now there's a rumor that the reason why this got leaked out in the first place and why we know Starfield and Indiana Jones is potentially coming to PlayStation is because Bethesda is not happy. Bethesda is the one who doesn't want their games to be locked away on Xbox, which makes sense. Because Starfield would have sold a lot more if it was on every single platform. And right. that's the thing people don't understand. They but are what? handicapping themselves by sticking with Xbox. Because Xbox Xbox, Xbox isn't moving the needle enough sales-wise to where it can just no. buy these. Exactly. Well, if, and the if, other these thing games, the- if these games are getting so expensive that like they need to bring in revenue, and Xbox is not providing the revenue to like even Be- break even on these games. Because exactly. the other thing yes. is that the, like Bethesda has been multi-platform for so long. Again, it was reported that the only reason Fallout 76 has been considered a success at all is because the PS5 side of the community, the PlayStation side of the community, has been keeping Fallout 76 alive. The Xbox community has not been doing that as much. No, um, yeah. There, so, there, yeah. It, it makes sense. that, And also, too, I was reading some threads and think think about it like this how weird it is for some of these developers to be developing on Xbox. Look at Tango Works. They're a Japanese studio yeah. making Xbox games that practically nobody in their studio is playing on Xbox. J- the, j- like they're the Japanese market does not like Xbox. They don't buy Xbox. I mean, it and seems they're, they're so sales, weird for them to do their, to do their that. sales. I will say that you know, there was that brief moment in time where their sales in Japan did increase. Uh, the Series X sales were better than the ones, but that's comparing a potato to a tomato at this point. Yeah, that's like. not well at this point though. It's like I think I, I was reading somewhere that apparently like they practically are like the same in terms of like just how distant they are from their competition. I mean, yeah. listen, it, it's not fair to compare it to the Switch because the Switch has been out for way longer. It's different, but like even the, the PlayStation Five, I think it's like a two to one or three to one ratio yeah, or something like that. It's like two to one. Yeah, they're getting ratioed. So it's just, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, but here's the thing, though. And I want to talk about, you know, because I know, you know, we didn't want to go like for like a crazy amount of time. Like, this is a, the, there is one more thing, though. There is one major thing I want to talk about, though. If this is true and Xbox is going third party, the long term ramifications of this, I think, are disastrous for the games industry. Because, again, right. you remove one of the biggest, um, the, like poles. one of the big pillars, the big tent poles in the industry. It's always been Xbox playstation nintendo it's been like that since the turn of the century right Right. and then you remove xbox that just leaves playstation is like the premier well so that's Mm -hmm. that well that that thing that is you're not wrong that would be the case for a bit what i'm more scared of is who will fill that spot because there will be i don't think anybody would well so again to go back to maddie's video he's scared of apple or um another big tech company trying to come in and take that take the, it's like Tencent, the thing is Tencent or um tencent and apple were the two big ones that he was afraid it, of taking microsoft's spot because at least it's micro- the way he put it was at least microsoft has history in gaming and i'm he, like they, you, you know you know yes you, you here's know, the be, thing though it'll be great though real quick when it'll be great imagine if sega was looking over being like you know what it's oh, time man. let's come back <laughs> to the dreamcast 2 baby we're bring, we're coming we're coming back with the brand new console, the Sega. The Damn. Se- the Sega. The it's Sega. just the shape of the logo. Sega one. Oh man. But I was gonna I was gonna say I think first off I don't I mean Apple's trying to get into gaming, but they're not gonna develop a console. Any company that is gonna come in and fill the void, it it's it's kind of weird because it's listen Xbox is gonna go away, it and then Microsoft is gonna be the one that steps up and just it's just going to be okay we're going to do the streaming stuff we're going to push it and it's going to be on you know you could play it on your tv you mm-hmm. could play it on your laptop what to they're already fair, though, doing well, real quick, well, real quick, though, but it's without fair, xbox 
Yeah, they have. Well, to be fair though, they haven't announced that they're leaving the console manufacturing business. They could right. still develop consoles, but just I don't know what that would look like. You know no, what I mean? Like, I, I like what? Like, I guess the question would be if Xbox makes more consoles and they make another console post Series S and X. What is the like? Why? Like, what is the purpose? Like, why would someone want to invest in that, in that platform? Then they that's won't the probably be again. some niche uh, hardware. Like, it, that was a rumor I wanted to bring up too. That the rumor was that they were literally just going to copy the Switch, and the next Xbox would be like a handheld cloud gaming hybrid. Right. But well, we also we've heard that well, Xbox and PlayStation are going to try to go back into the mobile. The, they're going to PlayStation is going to add give a proper Make a handheld, yeah, a proper handheld, not the fucking portal. But it's it's going to be more like the Switch, where it's still compatible with the PlayStation Five. Of course, of course. Right. But so, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, um, so that's its own set of rumors. But yeah, like. Mm-hmm. But there's but, another rumor. There's another rumor that is very interesting, and that is that they're going to stop doing day one games on uh, Game Pass. That that is what I wanted see, to talk. That would see that would be interesting because here's what I, here's what I was going to say too. What if they announce next week? Yes, some games are crossing over, but it's like they're older exclusives. But then they're right. like, hey, guys, moving forward, uh, no more day one exclusives on Game Pass. You got to pay the money for it. Sorry. Well, what's interesting? That's what maybe like six happen. months later, it'll well, go to a Game Pass. Well, what's interesting, and I'm only saying this because I feel like there is a comparison to, to why day and date matters as the person that, you know, has explained why PlayStation strategy makes sense for them. Um, We've There's a key ripped- reason why they would do that, by the way. We'll get well. Into that. We are rip- we have ripped into Hell Divers two so much. However, it is doing really well, well sales wise because it is a day and date game on PlayStation and PC, and it's also because it's multiplayer. But it's already outperforming every single release um, that uh, PlayStation has done on PC beforehand. Uh, so day and date, I think, does matter because it's like people want to experience that day one. And you're gonna get more people on the hype if you if they're there day one versus them waiting for the complete experience. So you're gonna see more returns right. on that first day, which is why they do that shit to begin with. But so yeah, I think that. Um, but bro, you also mentioned a bunch of other stuff about Game Pass that's wait, concerning, wait, like like. The so ad. wait, wait, I wanna I wanted to say the reason why they would do this because this rumor, I there's something about this rumor that sounds like there's some truth to it, right? Why you're gonna put your games on the competitor for to make more money, and then you're gonna shaft the people who own Game Pass, or potentially you're still gonna offer these games day one on Game Pass. Like there's some there's some type of disconnect there that doesn't make sense to me, right? So if they do take away day one games, that also puts them in a better position to put Game Pass on PlayStation because PlayStation. If Game Pass were, let's just say, in theory, Game Pass, uh, they were considering putting on PlayStation. One of the reasons PlayStation would deny it is that they would lose sales from those games on their marketplace, right? Because then people could just subscribe to Game Pass and then play it there. And then now PlayStation is only getting a cut of the Game Pass money, right? So it would somewhat make sense if you're like, we're going to revamp Game Pass. We're going to test out our games on the competitor. If it works well, then we can negotiate some deal with PlayStation and boom, the next three years, you may have Game Pass on PlayStation. And that's it. There's You can have the Xbox console, but it's just sort of going to be like, a, it's almost like, remember when paperweight. Steam, wait. well, it's like paperweight, but it's like, you know, you when Steam did the Steam, Steam box. Yeah, that's what it will be at that point. Well, and then oh, and that's, that, and then, that was then, shit. Well, but then at that point, think about this, right? Let's say they had Game Pass to PlayStation. They mar- and they market as being like, hey, you want Microsoft games? Here you go, Microsoft Game yeah. Pass. Here's all, here's Halo, here's Gears, here's Sea of Thieves, here's Indiana Jones, here's Hi-Fi Rush. All free with like a $10 a month subscription. Because they already have, yeah. they already have EA Play and Ubisoft Plus yes. and all that stuff on PlayStation that you, you can subscribe to anyway. Yeah, they're... I- they would make sh- but that's dangerous though they, they, they would make money let's not be careful they're gonna make money yeah they but yeah. again what does that mean for the future and long-term consequences because that, that makes me very scared it sets a precedent yeah. it's a i i really think this is the end this is how you say that this is over 
you do it gradually. You don't come out one day and say Xbox is dead and your console is worthless now. I think it's we we'll test the waters. If it's successful and we compare the numbers, we'll continue doing it more. And then eventually it gets it goes away. Just look at what uh, physical games are now where it's like we're seeing that gradual descent of okay we're gonna get rid of the physical games which by the way remember they're also rumored to be getting phys physical games uh from xbox xbox is getting rid of that right they're, they shut down an entire division dedicated to it walmart wants to get rid of all the physical xbox games see th there's just so much stuff going on with xbox that just says this is it it's been 20 some odd years it's time to lay it to rest. It didn't work out. It's not PlayStation. It's not Nintendo. They had some relevance during the 360, and they never captured that magic again. After like, Halo 3, it. after Halo 3, they stopped being competitive for some reason, as if they thought they won. Yeah. And it's not a fanboy thing. It's it's reality. No, that's it's looking what at it optics. is. That's looking that's looking at, at the history of what happened because they because they got complacent. PlayStation came back and won and has been dominant ever since. And that's not me being well, a again, fanboy. Yeah. I don't even that's think it was true. that. I, I think it's just the issue of, yeah, Don Matrick in there back in 2012 and 2013. They like they wanted to push once again the all-in-one entertainment, uh, the all-in-one entertainment device, and they focused way too much on things that weren't related to gaming. Exactly. No one cares about it being a cable set top box. Nobody cares about all but like all that's these exactly what crap. that's exactly what Braille and I are talking about when we when we like because that's what every everything has everything is now everything yeah. is a streaming box and so well it, now it is back in 2013 like it wasn't that's why we were saying they were ahead of the curve they were too they, they ahead were of the ahead curve. of the curve they, yeah they were ahead yeah. of well I I think honestly they could have got away with the entertainment box thing if they just wouldn't have done the stupid use games thing and the internet yeah the internet DRM. Because because nowadays, no one cares. If you say, oh, yeah, you got to be connected to the internet. Like, no one really cares. We're used to it by now. 2013, it was different, right? Again, yes. it's like you're ahead of the curve. It's just that you were just too early for some stuff. But again, the used games thing was was inexcusable. That that was inexcusable. That That's what killed it, in my opinion. But I don't know. And the used again, game market, think about it, died off shortly because it's, it's strange games, yeah yes it's it's so strange what is going on with xbox it, it feels they have really good ideas and i still really think it comes back to the games when you think of playstation you think about the last of a spider-man god of war and Horizon, xbox yeah X, xbox has halo and gears but they've halo and gears is not really yeah they've been stagnant they're not relevant like well they here i think i think gears is in a better place than halo you know? yeah i well, agree yeah. but halo's not god of war or sorry gears of war is not god of war right no so, it's not, it's not so, but, 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 but no no no, no, no. But, yeah. but like those those th so the big three uh the big three for xbox has always been halo gears forza halo right. gears forza um and Again, those are those are we can make fun of them and how they are the the generic uh meal that xbox fans are used to but that is their brand identity and when they give that up they have no brand yeah they but the, that is it's stale that that's the problem it's like it makes sense that they're gonna give this well, up it, because i'm sure it will it, sell better on playstation i, I i'll guarantee you right now it halo will sell better on playstation that's how bad I, it's been i no, no, no! I don't disagree with that, bro. I'm just saying that, like, it's stale to, to Xbox gamers. But you know, it, and Chris, <laughs> someone on Twitter said this is a joke, but it's it's <laughs> unironically kind of true. Um, Halo and Gears coming to PlayStation. Damn, PlayStation fans will know what it's like to play a good shooter. Yeah, that was that was so tough. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not wrong <laughs> like they're not wrong yeah, yeah. Um, but, but like i said just to kind of like bring this conversation home it's just like i i i'm very worried about what the long term again we need to wait for the confirmation next week yeah. we'll see we'll, we'll definitely provide an update on that when we get the news on what exactly is going on next week when we get the, the this... official news but the long-term consequences are what terrifies me because like i said xbox needs to exist because i feel like even if they aren't the best competition there needs to exist competition in the marketplace if there's no competition for sony and playstation 
that leads to stagnation and mediocrity and just well, the, okay, an okay, increasingly okay, okay. bad series of decisions. Bro, bro, bro. We, we, it's time for us to just, it's time for us to pull the, uh, the rug out from underneath this issue. All right. They're already getting stagnant and stale. They are. But they PlayStation, really are. I mean, yeah, at this rate. Something's no, and I agree, oh, but what I'm saying though is that it can it can get so much worse. Is my no, it, but that's yes, what I, yeah. it, it, I feel like even if Xbox exists, PlayStation is already going to get that way regardless. You know, all we're doing is making the process faster. We can go right. by faster, um, which isn't necessarily a good thing either. Uh, but it just helps us get to the point, uh, you know, abruptly quicker. But again, like PlayStation has its own issues, and I would love to do a whole thing talking about that because, again, I'll say it as many times as people need to hear it. Their lineup this year is nothing but exclusive third party games. There is not, a, except for yeah. the one that Braille mentioned, there is not one first party game from any of their major studios coming out this year. And that is unacceptable. And that's never happened to them, as far as I can remember. Um, so we're right. seeing a, a, a tonal shift in the games industry itself, not just with Xbox. Not just with all these layoffs, but the video games industry as we know it is going through a metamorphosis, and it doesn't look like it's going to be necessarily for the for the good. As I said earlier in uh, the week, dark times are ahead in terms of the actual industry, not the games, but the industry. But you know, it will affect the games in the future. Yeah, but you know who's gonna get the last laugh? Me. <laughs> no. Our buddy Jim Ryan, he's sitting down oh my God. eating a biscuit and tea, funny? laughing his ass off right that's now. Really? One, of those, one of those ironic, Jim Lion Crying Ryan was the guy who actually finally killed Xbox. I know. What is Jim Ryan's legacy? <laughs> Braille, he killed Xbox. He killed Xbox. What, what's Jim oh, Ryan's dude. legacy? Lying, crying, dude. making no games, but killing Xbox. <laughs> he didn't play Bruh. no games. He came to take the Xbox down, bro. That's a massive, bro. <laughs> That's a massive, bro. Bro, that needs to be that needs to be the uh, the thumbnail for this. It's just Jim Ryan standing just over Jim Ryan carrying the casket. He's the one carrying no, 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 the, the, the casket. flash photo. I need the. Oh yeah, photo. with the MP. Yeah, with, with the yeah. Oh, <laughs> that should be man. the thumbnail for this. That's like such a fanboy thumbnail, though. Oh my god, it's toxic a... fanboy thumbnail. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> these fanboys. I feel like every week. You know, PlayStation fanboys piss me off. Then Nintendo fanboys are saying something dumb and revisionist history about the Wii U. And then you got Xbox fanboys who just, they're so up in their feelings. And they, it's like, I'm sick of all these fanboys, man. Like, they just drive me nuts. Where it's like, oh, you know what? If this was PlayStation, I mean, I would feel like shit. I gotta be honest. I have more of an attachment to PlayStation. But I honestly would be making the same jokes, right? I would be like, it's funny and stuff. But. I don't know. With Xbox, it feels like we we kept saying this for years and years. Like I was in high school saying this, man, and they never changed. They never learn. They never got the stuff that we really wanted. And then when they were, this is what happens. So I don't know. I just feel I feel upset. I feel bitter. It's, I feel it, very. Yeah, no, bitter. it's sad. It's it's very sad. It is. Um. Only time will tell what exactly the news next week will bring. I mean, may, maybe, maybe there's a chance it's not as bad as it sounds. And maybe it's just like, it, maybe. It, it won't be, you know, maybe, just maybe it, things will work out in the end for Xbox where they can still exist and still thrive. But if it doesn't, I'm buying Halo on PlayStation. Well, I'll <laughs> tell you what, depending on that announcement next week, I may just sell my Xbox at GameStop before the value and it just plummets completely. Damn. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I, I can at least I get say, like three, I can at least again, get three hundred bucks again, 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 again. The only reason I would get an Xbox now is because through their backwards, backwards compatibility, compatib yeah. Well, their backwards yeah. compatibility, but and again, they have digital games, not physical, of course, but some are only physical. But point is, there are games that are backwards compatible on Xbox that are not even available on Steam or GOG. So that in and of itself is something like special in a way right but you know yeah like that's all in all next week is going to be insane um and i'm buying all the all the xbox games regardless uh if i don't care listen i and we all agree the console wars is nonsense however a middle we, school we... a middle school aged meta 
would be on the front lines defending the blue brand. I earned my, <laughs> I earned my purple heart. I have, and now that the war is over, I'm ready to receive my benefits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to Bro. receive veteran status. Bro. <laughs> you know, some some of these Xbox fans, they're going to listen to this and then they're going to be like, Bro, I know you guys are ponies, you idiots, man. That's what oh, I, I've, already, I've that. already. Bro, didn't you know I suffer from confirmation bias? Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't. I really don't know. It's just like they. Well, I'll tell you what, though. That toys for Bob news that we just got was a kick in the nuts, man. That's a kick man. in the nuts already when we're already feeling down. Um, can I thing. just let, let's get okay, RJ? I feel like you know this has been a very somber, you know, set of news. How about we end on a possible good note? Okay, let's go. There's ahead. a tiny bit of news that kind of that's small, but some people are reporting on it, like stealth and, and people like that. Apparently. Some Nintendo influencers are being flown, uh, are being flown to Japan. And Bruh. wait, what? Uh -huh. where, where do you see? Where do you see that? Stealth. I don't know how true Stealth is, but Stealth is reporting that. Let me see. Let me take a look. I wonder why so many Nintendo brand ambassadors are traveling today. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean Switch 2. When you follow all the Nintendo ambassadors and many of them have travel-related tweets, it's hard not to wonder if any anything is going on, even if it's only a Princess Peach Showtime event or something. Could be mm -hmm. linked to a direct trailer. I think it's more likely some kind of gameplay event, most likely. But hey, well, you know, but hey anything's possible. I mean, listen, they're all rumors are pointing to a Nintendo Direct next week, so you better believe we'll be covering that. Absolutely. Even if it's a partner direct, which means it'll probably be a bunch of mid. We will still cover it. From what Braille said about that direct run, if that shit actually happened. <laughs> well, oh. we'll see. If, well, the, the last thing we heard about the rumor Nintendo Direct for next week at the time of this recording was that it was either going to be A, a partner direct, or B, it's the final direct of the Switch era. So it'll be the last direct focus on Switch games. For, and then that'll be that. Last direct of the Switch era. Well, they'll kind of explain their their rollout. And then after that, we're going right into Switch 2. So. <sighs> shall Times see are changing, boys. They are. But uh, yeah. Any final thoughts before we close things out from either of you two? Can't wait to play Halo 1 on my PlayStation 5. Rest in peace. Rest rip in peace, Bo Xbox. Rip Bozo. Hold on, hold on. Let me rip Bozo. <laughs> You had a good run. We man. sit. You had a good we run. sit and pretty. No, they did not. They had an okay decent <laughs> run at best. We we sit and pretty. Listen, listen, let's, 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 let's since, not since ninety three. No, fuck let's you not, me. Let's not say rip Xbox. There's still a chance. We up against uh, not totally over. Dominated. Listen, the moment I see, I see Halo on my goddamn dashboard. <laughs> It's over. It's over. I can see that Master Chief helmet sitting right next to a God of War logo. I'm. You boot it up and you start seeing all the PlayStation buttons in that game. It's. It, it, listen, it doesn't get more over than that. Does it doesn't get okay. more Jover than that, bro? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll have to wait and see. I'll have to wait and see. All right, folks. I think it's going to end it for this episode of controller chronicles another episode in the bag and what a doozy of an episode this was a lot absolutely a lot was going on uh like I said, this is an ongoing topic that we'll be covering for quite a bit from when now yeah, until we get more news yeah well when we get to that event what, what day is it rj what day is the actual event for we have no idea all, all phil spencer said was sometime next week if that direct is thursday i would assume it's that's probably tuesday We'll see. We'll see. Uh, last I heard, the rumor was Monday, so it might be Monday. Or Monday. That works, too. Uh, go ahead and get it out of the way. Yeah, we'll see. Go ahead and show that nice PlayStation logo next to Halo. Yeah. We next to see. Gears. Next to Indy. We shall see. Relist. Relist Hellblade 1 on PS4. Oh, yeah. It is no longer on PS4, is it? Yeah, they have to relist it. Yeah. I want Phil Spencer to come out with the PlayStation shirt. He just walks. He just walks out with Jim Ryan. He's wearing his like Hawaiian shirt because he's retired. So like, hey, hands. what's Hold up? Hands. 
Uh, it makes you appreciate real quick, real quick before we head off. Real quick before we head off, because this just made me think again. What we saw that year at that one game awards where it was Sean Layden, Phil Spencer, and Reggie. Oh, that just yeah. makes that moment that just makes that moment even more special. <laughs> that just, oh, yeah. That's a moment in time, boys. Yeah. We'll, we'll look back yeah. Ten, we'll look back ten years from now and be like, remember when Xbox was a thing? Remember? Well, we're witnessing the Sega effect. This is what this is how it had to have been sort of when Sega announced that they're leaving the console market because man, like oh my god. Anyway. All right, RJ, you want to send us home or you want me to? What do you what do you want to do? Go ahead, Maddie. You close this out. Okay. Thank you all for joining us, everybody. Uh we hope you enjoyed this episode of Controller Chronicles. And we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Again, we will be covering whenever the xbox event happens next week whenever that nintendo direct happens uh we will be covering that so if you want to feel please feel free to hit that subscribe button hit that like and uh please share this around with your friends with your fit with your loved ones anyone that loves gaming that you know of and is over hyper fixated about it introduce them to us because uh my god that sets us to a t and yeah if you want to also follow us on our socials they're uh in our in our name description so at resident justice for rj at blinded braille for braille and at the most meta for yours truly and all right y'all yeah i think that will pretty much cover it again thank you all for joining us hope you all have a fantastic day or a fantastic week and we will see y'all next time bye everyone bye everybody